Hi everyone, if you've been following along with Blender updates recently, you might know there's a new hair grooming system coming to the software. So I figured we'd take a look at it because there's a new blog post made by Delay. I say new, it came out on July the 8th, so I'm a little bit late to the party talking about it, but I'd like to try and keep you updated on features and it also provides an opportunity for me to maybe share a few comments along the way. So the interesting thing about the new hair system is it's also an addition to the curves system in Blender, meaning that to make collections of hair on a character, you're gonna be making a new curve object. And also I found this quite interesting. It's integrated in some way with geometry nodes. So let's have a little read through this blog post by Delay and see what they say about it. So the future of hair grooming, a new curve system suitable for hair is going to be part of the upcoming Blender 3.3 LTS. LTS meaning long-term support. If you don't know what that means, so while Blender is being developed at certain milestones, there are LTS versions, which are versions whose main features don't change, but they are supported for a long time to come. So these are basically like milestones which studio environments might like to use if they want to make sure that everything is using the same version. So it's basically more of like a stability release. But anyway, this article covers the main design philosophy behind the new system, the initial deliverables and what is to be expected in the near future. So on this page you'll see a new breakdown video, it's about 23 minutes 52, by Andy, and I'm going to get the last name wrong, Grouch, Grouchik, something like that. You know how bad I am with names, this shouldn't be surprising, but uh, sorry if you're watching this Andy, I got it wrong. But this is a fantastic video, I was actually quite impressed with it, providing a lovely breakdown showing the new features. But we'll continue reading for now. So Curves Object, the new system is based on curve objects. To start working with hairs, you first need a scalp, so like a mesh surface that you're going to be placing your hair on, and this will be used for deformation and to add new curves onto its surface. With your surface object selected, go to the Add menu and pick Curve Empty Hair. So if you see here in the image. This will be the shift A menu where you usually add new objects and under curve you will find empty hair down there. This will create a new curves object and automatically set up the following things. It will set the active mesh object as the surface. So basically when you're making these new curve objects which are collections of hairs, in the properties for those curves there will be a parameter which is the active surface and this is typically going to be like the character model that you're using so it's going to set that automatically for you. It's then going to parent the new curves object to the surface and then set up a deform curves with surface node. I suppose this is part of an integration with geometry nodes. This should cover most of the cases when artists want to add a new curves object for hair and start to add and comb its curves. For animations, the curves get automatically deformed if the surface is animated, so that's very very cool. If artists need a more complex setup, they can tweak the initial node group. The outliner is the place where artists can group multiple curve objects, hide slash unhide them, and have a basic layering system. This curves object will eventually replace the old curve object, still used for the Bezier, NURBS, and Path Curve primitives. So this is what I alluded to earlier when I said that curves are going to be modified in some way by this new design. One thing I always say I appreciate when we're looking at new feature videos like this is I like it when features are not created in isolation. So rather, I always think it's better when new features being made are connective with other features in Blender to make it more cohesive, and so features can more creatively interact with each other. So I like that this new hair system is actually paying some more attention to regular curve types and also geometry nodes, which we'll talk about a little bit in a moment. But before we get to that, the spherical brush, this is really handy. Back in 20. 10, during the discovery phase for the Geometry Nodes project, Blender Studios artist Andy was asked about the existing particle system and what he was expecting the most. He shared his needs for set dressing tools, this was the initial step to the Geometry Nodes project. Andy was also inquired about hair grooming, since the hair particle system was the way artists would often do set dressing. Besides commenting on the existing features, he raised a special concern about the existing brush. So this is the brush you typically use to comb the hair at the moment in Blender. The brush only allowed for a projection mode commonly known as a 2D brush. That leads to natural effects and uncanny distortions in the hair comb. So if you've ever done hair work in Blender and wondered why it's so difficult to kind of like knock it into the right kind of shape that you want, I would hazard a guess and say that the projection mode is probably responsible for a fair amount of that frustration. But there is an alternative. This inspired the team to prioritize this in the new tools. The new 3D brush calculates the position in space based on the curves closer to the cursor and from that point it applies its effect as a sphere. So rather than influencing the curves based on a projection, it's going to create a kind of virtual sphere. Well, it's not really a sphere, it's more like a point, but the influence is spherical from where the cursor is. So basically it's gonna consider in 3D space around that point, what curves to modify. So that will allow you to direct things much more fluently and easily when trying to comb the different hairs. There are two main workflows for digital hair creation, procedural and destructive. A destructive workflow is perfect for hero characters, while a procedural pipeline excels at throughput. You can replicate and tweak hairdos in a more scalable fashion. The destructive pipeline focuses on tools that allow artists to manually bring their vision into fruition, hair strand by hair strand if needed. So if you actually watch the demonstration video shown at the uh, top of the blog post, it's really really cool because Andy shows you 
you how you can get like your like really individual control over the hairs if you like. It was a pretty fun demonstration to watch. But anyway, hair strand by hair strand. For that we need tools such as comb, pinch, puff, shrink and slide. The procedural workflow on the other hand creates and shapes the hair based on parameters such as clumpiness, length, density, kink, roughness and twist. So which system should they pick? Procedural or destructive? Well why not a combination of both? So this is where Delia throws us into the more design philosophy of the new system. So he says, there's an old adage in the industry that goes roughly like, just paint. If artists want to edit the hair, they should be able to pick a brush, pick a hair, and comb it the way they want. The tools that allow this are the best friends of an art director. Instead of spending time fiddling with knobs and abstract parameters, the tool gives them a direct way to manipulate their subjects. This is just talking about regular brushes. You have direct control over what to change. This is the initial focus of the hair project. The system should be able to support at least 120,000 hair strands edited at the same time. Artists should be able to add and remove hair and transform them in diverse ways. The initial tool available is add, comb, delete, density, grow slash shrink, pinch, puff, slide, smooth and snake hook. Besides those there are a few selection tools available from a selection paintbrush to different selection operators. They allow users to work in a small part of the hair to have more control as well as adding quick random variations. And we'll take a look at this image to show those tools there as well. The next plan tools are cut, smooth distribution, smooth length, smooth selection. So let's take a look here at this image. So regarding the destructive workflow, he's talking about the different brush selections and just as is consistent with all the other modes in Blender, you can see them here on the left side of the 3D view. And I quite like the icons for these. These seem a lot more descriptive than some of the other icons in the software. I'm not a big fan of the sculpting brush icons. But these are what you would consider your destructive tools. As an artist, if you want to just jump in and start modifying things and throwing them around, these are the lovely tools you can use. Again, watch the video by Andy to see a live demonstration of how this works. Another thing I liked about that video as well, by the way, is Andy gives a good demonstration of the density brush, showing how you can use it to kind of tell the hair system what density of hairs should be where you're painting, but also it listens to the strength parameter and you can have that set to pressure sensitivity. So it's really cool being able to basically paint on hair based on like how much pressure you're applying using your stylus. I haven't used a hair system much in Blender before, but I just thought that was kind of cool because I never really thought about it that way. I always think about stylus pressure as being like a texture painting or a sculpting thing, but I guess it could also be a hair sculpting thing as well. So drawing your eyes over to the right side of the screen, this is of course the more procedural side of things. So this is where we have more parametized type effects like hair noise. We can change the noise, so basically the disruption of the hair and the thickness as well based on parameters. Things which could possibly be applied after the fact and then made destructive. So I think having a combination of both of these things is quite interesting and quite good for artistic power. And by the way, this file is the Project Heist file. You can click and uh, also download that if you like. Anyway, so Delay is going to try and explain that part of the procedural workflow now. The Geometry Nodes project showed the potential of a procedural pipeline within the Blender workflow. Non-destructive modeling was possible before, but combining the existing modifiers with granular user-controlled geometry nodes increased this exponentially. Basically just saying how powerful geometry nodes has been. And we can see that demonstrated by all of the community projects popping up, especially on Twitter. I think a lot of people are surprised now at how how like fundamentally powerful geometry nodes has been, showing people what kinds of new fantastic tools they can develop for Blender, and just showing how it can save so much time by improving people's workflows. The same benefits can be had for the new curves objects. Given that the hair is just curves, and that curves are already supported in geometry nodes, this is possible from day one. There is still a need for curves nodes focusing on hair use cases like children interpolation, hair parting, complex hairdos, and non-straight hair types. All the effects possible via destructive modeling tools should also be possible via nodes, allowing for a fully procedural pipeline or a mixed pipeline with guiding hairs enhanced with nodes. At the moment, generic curve effects are possible with the node system. Project Heist is helping to test this already to add messy hair. Objects are using the same curves data block from the main hair object, but with a few geometry nodes modifiers on top to add extra randomness and more volume. So that's what we're seeing in the image here. We have what's being created destructively and we have the geometry nodes adding some extra details. So procedural destructive tools. During the early stages of the hair development process, Andy was working with Simon Thomas to create a few disposable geometry nodes to add one-off effects to be applied as part of the destructive combing for Project Heist. He would work with the existing tools, add a new geometry nodes modifier, tweak a few parameters and apply the modifier. This included effects such as noise, density adjustments, random delete, hair resample thickness and randomized lengths. So I think this is really interesting because when I've been doing my generative modeling experiments with like the Biogen add-on and generators lab, one 
something I noticed myself start doing was starting to develop modular nodes in the way that in a modifier stack where I was generating an effect, I could have pre-made node trees which I would apply at any point in the stack and that I could easily just like drag in and reuse for different effects. So for example, in the generators lab, there's one for like making a voxel layer around a mesh. There's one for making a separate shell of an object around a mesh. And you could combine these in different orders to get different effects. So I thought it's quite interesting hearing that Simon Thomas was experimenting with that kind of modularity in a way for the hair system in this semi-procedural workflow. This calls back to what we were talking about earlier, where I think it's really nice having this connective design between different features in Blender. It soon became clear that although some of these effects could become a widely usable tool, e.g. resampling, other effects were unique to the look of the production, e.g. hair thickness, which was defining the hair curve profile. So opportunity for stylization or artistic choice there. These tools might be specific to the production, but they also help the development process. Even while developing their existing brushes, a lot of the time was spent going back and forth between the artists testing the features and the developers doing small adjustments. At the end of the day, the core part of each brush was rather small. To leverage the artist's input as much as possible and give them tools to create pipeline specific effects, an idea was born. Geometry nodes based curve sculpting brushes and geometry nodes based curve operators. That's quite an interesting idea. Geometry nodes based curve sculpting brushes. So are these brushes which perform an operation described by geometry nodes live while sculpting? Having a look at the design thing here, a very nicely framed image. So that says node based curves hair sculpting brushes. God, that's a mouthful. If the math is the smallest part of the brushes, why not make them user defined? Also a tool that can take your geometry nodes, run it once with its parameters. Plus you can pin this brush to make user defined tools operators. Okay, that's all a bit confusingly worded, but if this is what I think it means, then I think that'd be really cool. Basically almost treating geometry nodes a bit like code in a way, or like a visual scripting system for modifying object data, which you could use as a brush or as like a one cool operation or something. I might be interpreting that wrong, but I think that's kind of interesting. But like, let me let me try and interpret this. If the math is the smallest part of the brushes, why not make them use it a fun? What does that mean? <laughs> If the math is the smallest part of the, what, in the design of the brushes and the construction of the brushes, like why not make them user defined? Make what user defined? The, the brushes or the math or all the brushes, some of the brushes. Also a tool that can take a geometry nodes and run it once with its parameters. Plus you can pin this brush. What is this to brush? The tool that's made by the geometry nodes to make user defined tools operators. So is it a brush or an operator? Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to, I'm getting confused by the wording of that. This would also be beneficial for mesh modeling as well as the prototype of new tools. There is no final design on how to integrate operator specific inputs and outputs. There is no final design on how to integrate operator specific inputs and outputs. So basically you're saying that for this design idea, you're not specifically sure on how it would be implemented and how you would provide an input and get an output for from it. This should be integrated with the asset browser system as part of presets together with regular brushes, I suppose. Yeah, that makes sense. In the same way that we've already got like node groups in there. Right, so the new curve system is now officially in Blender, but it's still in its infancy. Team is focusing on making the system exciting for SIGGRAPH 2022. I believe that's early on in August, August 8th to something, I think. Not too sure. As of now, this includes a preliminary node-based operator support, new tools for cutting the hair to smooth it and a fill operator. Next step is to support more hair-specific geometry nodes for the non-destructive pipeline. And finally, they'll need to replace the old curve system, including an edit mode for new curves objects. There'll be a call for help once the project gets to that point so people can start porting the existing operators. And you are able to try out the new system on the daily build of Blender 3.3, check the documentation, report bugs if you find them, and share your work using B3D and hashtag hair curves. All right, so that's the new system. So that took a little while to read through. Most of that sounds pretty cool, although the end got a little bit confusing for me. But if it's what I thought it was, then that opens up some really interesting potential. But anyway, I recommend you go back up to the top of the blog post and actually have a watch of this video on the official Blender channel, The Future of Hair Grooming in Blender. It's a really, really good demonstration by Andy, really nice to watch and to uh, listen to. So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. Maybe check out some of our other videos on the channel. If you want to learn more about Blender, experimental techniques, and to uh, improve your artwork, see what kinds of products we're working on, you can join my Patreon and get your name put permanently on this piece of evolving artwork. And if you made it to the end of the video, the emoji I want you to put in the comments so I can see who made it this far is going to be a brush. I was looking for a comb, but I don't think there's a comb emoji, so I think a brush will have to do. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.